Okay, we're live. 123. Okay, three, two, one. Hello, everyone. Welcome to episode 123. Today, we want to talk about just some passwordy type things. We're going to hit some passwords. We're going to talk about SMS two factor and and why. Let's start over. Hold on. Start over. Let me read what you wrote. Last pass, pass, ready, sex, two fact. Okay, you ready? Okay, three, two, one. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Security Podcast on the In30 Network. This is episode 123. We're going to talk about some security news. We're going to talk about some passwords, some, some last pass action, and why two factor is questionable on text message or SMS. So let's bring Tom in, and I think we're going to have a good show. Hey everyone. So right before we start, we got a couple things. This is the last episode before DEF CON. So if you see me at DEF CON, I will be mainly at the Crypto and Privacy Village helping out. Uh, feel free to say hi. Tell, tell me how much you hate the show, you love the show, how you want to join the WhatsApp group, how you want to exchange PGP keys, all that good stuff. I will be there. Preferably buy me a tasty beverage or go out with me even for a tasty beverage. All that's good stuff. And... And I hope to see everyone there and tell your friends. So, so just so and I will be building cool things elsewhere. So maybe next time, DefCon. So just to, just to let you know, we probably won't have an episode next week. I will be landing and trying to figure out how to get my badge next Wednesday night. Which, by the way, is Blinky. It, we have a Blinky badge this year. It's all up. of the blinking lights. So, so just a plug for that and. Actually, I'm giving two, I'm giving sort of two talks. I am talking to the kids about privacy in schools on Friday at 10 a.m. Unfortunately, it won't be recorded, and you need to be on the list to get in because there are kids there and safety, safety, safety. And I'm then hightailing it to Friday at 10 a.m. to the Crypto and Privacy Village to talk about this year in crypto where I can't really tell you what I'm talking about, but believe me, you should be there if you're there. Say hi and listen. So... There you go. Anyway, Tom, what do you want to talk about first? First, let's cover uh, let's cover a LastPass vulnerability. Uh, this is by uh, Detectify.com, by their labs. Um, uh, well, we lost you, Tom. Tom, we lost you. Sorry about that. I believe I'm back. I accidentally muted myself. Um, anyway, this is by uh, Detectify.com. Uh, we will put this link in the show notes. Uh, but uh, the security researcher out there named... Uh, I'm going to butcher this. I'm terrible. Uh, Matthias Carlson. Uh, he actually found some awesome, awesome problems uh, in LastPass that he was able to responsibly disclose to them. And LastPass got right on it and got to fixing it. Um, so it looks like there was a bug in the way that LastPass detects what site you're on. Uh, so he crafted this cool, mangled, it looks pretty simple in the site, but if you understand regular expressions, you've got to kind of break this thing down to build your vulnerability around it. It's pretty cool stuff. Um, but he crafted a link that LastPass would look at it and say, oh, you're clearly on twitter.com uh except you weren't you were on his site uh so lastpass would then autofill twitter's password into whatever fields there are now uh with most browsers uh the vast majority of browsers are going to run javascript so you can put that on your page uh, you can even hide it on your page you don't have to show it to anyone and use javascript to detect autofill so if you say hey if anything pops into this box send it off to my server and then with that, anyone who comes to your site and they have LastPass and they're logged in and they've got the credentials for that particular site you're harvesting for, you'll just grab their usernames and passwords, all thanks to this autofill bug. Now, LastPass was really fast. They fixed this. It's fixed now. Uh, he was awarded a bug bounty of $1,000. I personally think that's a bit low, especially for a bug this egregious, but at least they're giving something. Um, he does say that, you know, our password manager is bad. Should we stop using them? No, absolutely not. They solve so many problems and they are a much better solution than reusing, than coming up with 
uh, some sort of, you know, trying to remember all these passwords or some kind of cool, clever way to embed your normal password with a site name. Uh, password managers just solve too many issues for us to get rid of them. And look, we, we've spoken about how LastPass has the inherent vulnerability that it's in the cloud and you're trusting it you're trusting all this data with someone else and we've spoke we, we've spoken about this this is not something that that yes if you are really paranoid there's other ways other than lastpass but if you're trying to weigh the convenience lastpass is still awesome it still helps you out it still helps you out in the jam rather than having to do whatever you're going to do to memorize all these other passwords using key pass or using something else that's completely local so LastPass is still good. We still like them. It's the open source way is KeePass, but if you want something a little more supportive, right there, you can go and see LastPass. Yeah, it's in, you know, just to reiterate, LastPass got on this. They fixed it. Uh, they responded quickly enough. Um, and they, they don't sit on their hands when it comes to security issues. I do like LastPass. I know that people generally. I won't even say generally. There are some people in the security community that absolutely hate cloud-based password managers, or they, they don't like the idea of password managers in general, putting all the keys in one place. Uh, I personally think uh, the convenience mixed with the security benefit gives us a really good solution for normal users, for really all users. I use a password manager. Now, I'm using KeePass. I'm not using LastPass. Uh, but I've got nothing against LastPass. I think for an average user, LastPass is fantastic. It's wonderful. It's easy. And it makes your life simpler while making you more secure. Everyone really wins. Well, look, one of the reasons for starting this podcast is Tom and I can sit here and debate with you why LastPass is not good. And we can talk about this and why you should use KeePass. And then you're going to say, okay, let me get to KeePass. You download it. You're like, it's a jar file, not a jar file, a uh, uh, Atari, it's a, it's dot gz it's zipped up you have to unzip it what do i do first okay this looks pretty ugly i have to move my mouse and generate randomness and and the instructions are not that clear and then you put it on a usb key you do this and you lock yourself out and then you end up going back to the same thing you were doing we're trying to weigh convenience and security for you and to say hey you know what for most people last pass for $12 a year that can be on all these devices, has all these things, it's pretty good. And let's just reiterate that. Now, they're not a sponsor, they're not paying us, but that's not 12 bucks a month, that's 12 bucks a year. It's like $1 a month, seriously. It was, it was something that I paid for every year for myself and a few family members, just because it's stupidly cheap. I mean, I spend more than 12 bucks when I go out to fast food. Which I probably shouldn't say on air. It's uh, it's not healthy. Don't do that. Don't be me. <laughs> so anyway, so LastPass, they fixed it. And just as a side note, just to finish this up, and we don't know any details yet, but Travis Ormandy of Project Zero uh, knocked on LastPass's door, which is never, ever good. There's never any good social call with Travis. I wonder how his... I wonder how like he submits resume is if something if something were to happen like how does that work you knock on the door who is this Travis and the entire world starts shaking in their boots he's claiming that there's some vu vulnerability bugs that he's he's ready to document with them or talk with them this may have been it but either way he's talking to them and I'm assuming because of LastPass and how fast they got on this it won't be a big problem but I just kind of want to see what it is yeah, I guess Travis uh, hasn't really taken a close look at password managers in general, uh, as far as the security of them, breaking them down, trying to, you know, crack what they're holding. Um, and he's targeted LastPass, which is a good thing, let's reiterate, because the only way we can solve these problems is if we find these problems. And Travis is a god at finding these problems. He is the guy you go to if you want your software broken and torn apart six ways to Sunday. Uh, so I'm sure he's going to find some stuff. I'm sure LastPass is going to fix some stuff. And I'm sure we're all going to get the white paper at the end that we can read and go, oh, wow, I should probably avoid doing this thing that got LastPass owned in my own application. It's a good thing for everyone. So, yes, we're hoping for that. And like we said, and by the way, if you want a way to pay for it, if you have Android, get Google Rewards. 
give them some uh, personal questionable information like where were you the last couple days they'll give you a couple cents and you should get in like twelve dollars a year just to pay for last pass or your mobile strike counter strike coins or your pokey stops i don't know is that what they're called <laughs> well it's it's really pokey coins but and, and counter strike is a pc game i would love counter strike mobile but i think it would control horribly but you know if they could find a way to make it control nicely and i could play csgo on on my phone, oh, I in. So, okay, let's move on. I want to skip to right now to uh, why SMS two factor is broken and will be deprecated. So that's a lot of big words. So basically, if you got, you know, how you send your your bank sends, we're going to send you a message to this on your phone. We want you to type in the code or whatever it is. Well, that's apparently not secure anymore. And I mean, the details are a little a little too specific, but. For the most part, you're gonna that's gonna stop happening. And I'm hoping that they're gonna try and push people to Google Authenticator or some sort of other way to verify who you are. Right. So SMS two-factor authentication has never been the most secure solution in the world, right? Uh, one of one of the best secure solutions is the TOTP application, which is a fancy way of saying the website will show you a QR code, you scan it with an app on your phone, and then you get six digits that change every minute or so. That's what TOTP is. If you've got an app on your phone and you have to type in numbers that you see on the app, uh, that's TOTP. It's really nothing more than that. TOTP is just the name of the, the protocol and the way of putting it together so it works properly and securely. Um, but that's that's really the best way to do two-factor that I found. Now, I love YubiKeys. Uh, I'm a big fan of YubiKeys. Uh, we should probably have them on again soon. Um, but SMS two-factor authentication has always been the lowest common denominator. You don't need uh, a smartphone at all. You don't need any apps. You do need cell phone signal. You need to be able to receive SMS wherever you're at. So if you're overseas and you don't have any signal at all, or if you're gonna get charged a couple bucks a text message, yeah, logging into Google and getting that SMS probably isn't the best option for you. Um, and on top of that, depending on where you're at, let's be realistic, everywhere you're at, um, the government can and probably is intercepting any and all communications just for fun. So if you're trying to protect an account from something particularly sensitive, if you're trying to, uh, let's say you've got a secret Google account that you don't want tied to you, but uh, you can correlate someone logging into a Google account and you receiving a text message on your personal number for that account. We all know we can make the links. We, we know who that account belongs to. There's a lot of problems with SMS authentication, um, but I don't think it's the worst thing in the world. Yes, it's got a lot of problems. Yes, it's spoofable. Yes, uh, you can you can pick them out of the air with the right equipment. But on the other hand, it is simple. It is easy. You hand them a phone number, and now you are instantly more secure. I agree with the deprecation. I don't think we'll see this go away anytime soon. Uh, I think this will be around for years and years and years. But um, I, I don't think it's the, the worst thing ever. What I want, and I was telling you this, is I want Google Authenticator to somehow be thrown into the default apps, at least for Google. And I want Apple to develop something, something like that. They're never going to use Google's Google's Authenticator protocol, but to do something, maybe make it iMessage. So iMessage is ubiquitous enough that they that instead of text message, SMS, they may be able to send out iMessages instead. I don't know if that will work. But... The problem is people don't want to download apps. So I, I saw the statistic way, way back when, and I may be pulling it out of my rear end, that 47% of smartphone users have never downloaded an app. And I was trying to recreate that. I was looking for it. And what I found out is that most people, once they download their initial set of apps right when they get their phone, they don't visit the app store anymore. They just don't do it. So somebody comes in, shows them how to get to their phone. They, they install Angry Birds, and that's it. They don't go back, oh, we need a stock app. They use the default stock app. They they want the internet. They use the default browser. They want SMS. Look, we, we've been we've been telling you to use Signal or WhatsApp. And my friends are still like, are still saying, eh, just text me. 
I don't really care because like Tom said, it's the lowest barrier to start with. They People just don't want to do any more work. And I keep on telling at least my Android friends, just download Signal, make it your default. Guaranteed it's better than whatever, better than what Verizon's making their default or AT&T or Sprint or T-Mobile. And if somebody eventually has Signal, you'll be secure. If not, it's still, it's still a text messaging protocol that has material design on it. And yes, if you're on Apple, you're going to use iMessage and getting someone to download anything other than iMessage is next to impossible. But, but like this, like you said, SMS is ubiquitous everywhere, unless you're me at work, which has no cell signal. And my students have run into that. I tell them to turn on two factor and they turn on the SMS broadcast. And then they, they always ask to go to the bathroom and they, with their cell phone, because they're looking for service. So, yeah, I, and I, I hate to say this, especially about NIST, because after the Snowden leaks, NIST, uh, it, well, after the Snowden leaks, after, um, even before the Snowden leaks, when we're looking at, uh, you know, the curves they chose uh, and the basically some cryptography stuff that totally looks like a backdoor um, and totally kind of is a backdoor. It's really a backdoor. And they knew about it. They were warned about it, but they went through with it anyway. No one really in, in the high security community takes NIST too, too seriously anymore. It's kind of like talking about RSA. But... Um, I do agree with the recommendation. We should start phasing it out. That said, we need something better to replace it with. Now, something like Google Authenticator is great. You don't have signal? Awesome. I don't care. It, it, it runs on your phone. It operates based on the clock. So as long as your time is roughly correct, you can get into your site. Um, but what I don't want to happen is for uh, developers, site owners, and service provider providers to say, uh, well, NIST says SMS two-factor authentication is broken, so we're just going to get rid of it. Oh, well, what are we replacing it with? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. We tried it. It's broken. We're getting rid of it. No more two-factor for anyone. That is the worst possible thing that can happen in this situation given this recommendation. Um, yes, we should start phasing it out. We should start moving towards different styles of two-factor authentication. Uh, Google is experimenting with a new one now that looks pretty neat, but you do need Signal to make it work. Um, but, you know, it's it'll be a while. I don't think anyone's going to completely get rid of two-factor authentication just because NIST says SMS probably isn't the best way to do it. I don't know what the, how hard it is to for your website to turn on two-factor in the sense of everything that has control of your credit card or personal identifiable information should have an option to set up Google Authenticator. I just think it should. And it, it really, it depends on <laughs> the site itself. It depends on what platform you're building it on. Uh, is there a plugin already built for it? I mean, with WordPress, there's like 10 different Google Authenticator plugins to just turn it on and you're on and that's it. Um, in uh, certain pieces of software that you log into. I, I know GitLab is a very popular uh, open source developers uh, repository uh, piece of software. Um, it's, it, you literally, you just do it. It's a checkbox and it's done and you've got two-factor enabled. Um, you can even go into the options and say, hey, this is now mandatory. Everyone has to have it on their account. Um, there are some things where it just, the libraries, the, the plugins don't exist yet. People haven't built it. And it's not the hardest protocol to implement, uh, but like with everything in security, there's a lot of edge cases and some people, myself included, don't really want to put something out there and make a tragic mistake and to be you know put on the line for everybody's account getting, uh, getting compromised. <clears throat> The, the last problem that I see is that all these different sites have different ways. I wish we would adopt a standard, whether that be Google Authenticator, whether it be YubiKey, whether it be whatever it is, just let's get something going. And unfortunately, SMS right now is that standard, and it's really hard to get something else. I mean, and I hate looking on these websites. Well, to increase security, why don't you do this and jump through all these hoops so we maybe will sometimes send you an email or we'll sometimes send you a push, or we'll sometimes do this. And like even Apple, we don't know how Apple's two-factor works. Everyone, I turned it on, but I never get asked, like never get asked to re-authenticate something. And I'm just thinking, so what was it good for? Like, I, I still don't get it, but. Yeah, I've, I've had websites and, and services say, 
you know, hey, we we offer two-factor authentication. And I get really excited. I'm like, oh, yes. So I, I pull out Google Authenticator. I've, I'm ready to scan the QR code. And then they say, all you have to do is just download our app on your phone. And we're going to give you two-factor codes, but we're also going to give you some ads and some push notifications for stuff you really don't want. And occasionally we're going to bug you just to bug you. And sometimes we might ask you for microphone permissions, even though we don't really need that. Just don't worry about it. And it's super annoying. Now, not all applications that use two-factor or have two-factor settings will do that kind of stuff. There's one in particular that's pretty awful. Uh, but you don't need an application to do this. There's there's a standard, it is set, it works everywhere. There's a great company built around this standard named Authy, and they make a really pretty Google Authenticator. That's basically what they do. If you want to use the open source one, there's an open source Google Authenticator that you can load up just about everywhere and it will just run. Um, I, I think TOTP is the standard we should all be following. I just want more sites to have two factor somehow enabled and, or not somehow enabled using open source standards. So everyone knows that everyone can get it. And we don't have, like you said, 30 different apps to do to keep you secure. So our last topic is password haystacks. And I don't know if we covered it, but if we did, we're just going to cover it again. So I'm sitting at, I'm sitting at uh, continuing education and I'm learning how to teach this, a new computer science course to students. And one of the things that they're talking about is algorithms. And they said, they tied it into passwords. And they said, oh, why don't you create an algorithm? Because remembering to have your password be password one or password two or password three, while fits an algorithm is not good, not secure, not anything. If you can find a way to take the site and jumble the letters up in a way that you know it for every site, then you can be inherently more secure because you're changing it around and you can't and you can't figure it out like it's not your dog's name the good the good part about that is that they're right for the most part the bad part about that is creating an algorithm we're not we are not that good at oh what are you going to do you're going to take facebook and spell it backwards or you're going to you're going to split it in two and put the first the last half first and the second half and the first half second, I mean, we all know that. Let, let me let me give you a, a spoiler alert out there in the audience. And you can you can cover your ears if you haven't heard this uh, or if, if you don't want to hear this. Um, any clever algorithm you can come up with to take your uh, some combination of your username, your email address, the site name, a combination or just one of them uh, or your your pet's name or a commonly used password and try to mangle it together so it'll fit your algorithm and fit into every site. I can guarantee you some stupid brain dead Python script has already done that for you. And it's generating Bob the evil hackers word list right now that he's going to later own you with humans are not clever. We are certainly not more clever, clever than 20 lines of Python. That's why we have 20 lines of Python. So back to it, the idea was good because they're teaching algorithms and they're teaching you this. But the problem is they didn't explain. They, they didn't say like this was this. This is just academic and not what you should actually do, because then the next step was let's go to how strong is my password dot net and test how strong your password is by giving it your password, which don't do. They didn't say you should try a variation of the password. You should try something else. They just did that. So we had to come up with a group. And if you listen to security now, go back to the password haystacks episode. He did about two years ago. Uh, basically what it is, is just pad your password with a whole bunch of similar symbols, whatever it is, periods, slashes, hashtags, dollar signs, percent signs, just make your password really, really long. And the idea is when you guess a password, it is, it is either right or wrong. There is no almost that when you're running it through an ASIC processor, it's not going to say, well, you're close. It's going to say right or wrong. And if it's right, it's going to stop. If it's wrong, it's going to continue going. And if you want to know how fast they go, I think the entire 16 character name space can be broken in six hours or six minutes. Depends on your hashing algorithm. 
If but, you're using MD5, six minutes is not out of the realm of possibility. Okay, so that's 16 characters. Whatever, however clever, however random button mashing you want to do, six minutes. So let's so if you make it much, much longer, because each one is exponentially harder to do. So let me give you an example. Do period slash five times, Facebook, period slash five times. And if you need a number, put a number one at the end, which is not a great. That's not great by any means, but it's it's 17, 18 characters. So just make it longer. Do period slash 10 times. That's times two. That's 20. Do it at the end. That's another 20. There's 40. And then put Facebook one in the middle of it. And there's 49, 50 characters. And now you are really protected because it doesn't know what your password is. It doesn't know that you copied it. It just has to try everything. Yeah, so uh, password haystacks is really the best way to explain it is exactly how it sounds. Uh, a password is a needle in the haystack, uh, and the the best thing you can do is not to uh, not to make the needle harder to find because that's relatively impossible with computers with automation. It's going to find the needle. It's just the amount of other stuff it has to sift through. So make the pile of hay, make the search space bigger. And throw a bunch of hay, throw a barn full of hay on top of the password needle and make it stupid difficult for computers to figure it out. That's the idea. Now, don't put the word Facebook like in the middle of your password because unless you're logging into Twitter, that would be clever. I'm sure someone has tried that though. So it's on a word list somewhere. Don't do that either. Uh, but if you've got, you know, your standard password, you can do, you know, name of the sites and your password and then padding on the ends or padding at the beginning or padding on the edges, make the thing stupid long. Now I will preface this by saying, um, none of this applies to you. If you're just using a password manager, like we've been telling you to do for the past couple of years, uh, seriously, your, your password haystacks are built right in. When you say generate 32 character, random password, that's your giant haystack. And by the way, that needle isn't on any word list. No one has random noise on word lists. It just wastes time. Um, so if you can't use a password manager for some reason, Password haystacks is a decent option. It's yes, and and think. Of, I always look at it this way. Yes, if you're on a computer in front of a full keyboard, typing a password may not be that difficult. But always remember, and this is the weakness, is on a mobile phone where you're sitting there and you have to type in this long, complex password. So the password manager of LastPass always does help. But think of haystacks if you're constantly logging into something on a phone where you where you want it long, but you want it easy to remember, and padding is something that you can remember and type quickly. And and you can even apply this to something other than traditional <laughs> passwords. Uh, let's say you've got you know a, a lock screen combination, and you really only want four characters. Throw like 10, throw 10, five characters at the front, five characters at the back. Um, you know, don't, don't just pad it with ones or zeros like do one zero one zero or something like that something easy to type that's going to be real fast uh and you've just made your your passcode to get into your phone way way more secure uh without really any mental or cognitive burden on yourself so i mean th there's haystacks like i said we were just dealing with it at at sitting here in meetings all day and it's something that makes you much more secure, much more easier to type in if you don't want to go that not necessarily the 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 last pass, the password manager app. But if you want something that you can easily remember and go from there, you, sh you should try it out. Okay. Yeah, if, if anything, it's going to make you a bit more secure. And if you're on a password manager, just crank that guy up. Just 32 characters. Yeah, OK, it's a good start. 64. Now we're talking. Throw in 256, yeah, you're not going to be on any word list. Yes, the problem is is that, and this is for all those websites who limit your passwords, Yep. just always check. You know what I like to do? I like to keep it at 31 just because that's you, 32 is usually the limit. I, I changed my PayPal password today, and I, I did what I usually do. I go in. I said, yeah, give me just whatever random string you've got today, key pass. I pasted it in and PayPal said, oh, that's way too long. Shorten that down to about 20 characters. All right, now we can talk. It's like, really? 
your PayPal. You deal with money. You have my personal information. You store my credit cards and bank info. And you can directly impact my life in a very negative fashion. Why on earth are you limiting me to 20 characters? This is ludicrous. So, uh, yeah, some shame on PayPal. Shame them. So they're now shamed. Yeah. So anyway, we're gonna end. We're gonna end on that. On that note, we're gonna end again. PayPal or PayPal DefCon twenty four plug is uh, next Thursday through Sunday in Vegas. If you're there, go. If you're nearby, go. There's room for you. It's not canceled. It's always gonna be there. Don't get on the Wi Fi. You just might learn something. Yeah, you you may learn something just standing on line. You never know with who's going to walk around. And I'm begging if InfoSec Taylor Swift is there, please make it obvious who you are. I just want – I would buy you a beer, whoever you Taylor, are. Taylor Swift is going to walk out on stage, give a security talk, drop the mic, and walk away. And it's going to be the most amazing thing anyone's ever seen. So, okay, everyone. We're going to leave you with that. We will see you next week. Have a good night. See you, everyone. Bye.